So I covered a departure from Medford, Oregon Airport recently and I uh, just noticed that there has been a recent crash uh, off of the departure from runway 14 and I've just decided to have a little talk about the departure uh, that was being done. So let's have a listen to the clearance. Medford ground, Navajo 64 Bravo Romeo with uh, information uniform at uh, Jet Center. I'd like to pick up our IFR departure. Navajo 64 Bravo Romeo, Medford ground. Cleared it to the Foxtrot Lima X-ray Airport via the Brute 7 departure. Lengths transition, then as filed. Climb and maintain 11,000. Expect 15,000 five minutes after departure. Departure frequency 124.3. Squawk 6677. All right, so I'm displaying the weather here. So the METAR for Medford, Oregon. Uh, you can see we've got uh, three statute miles of visibility, mist, and it's overcast at 200 feet, which is pretty solid IFR conditions. So you'd expect to, if you were going to launch into this, to be pretty current with uh, IFR procedures. He's been given the Brute 7 departure, which you can see in picture form on the left-hand side here. And we launch off runway 14, and then you can see there's a right turn, which goes all the way around to the Medford NDB. You go over the top of the NDB and then fly 066 bearing outbound from the NDB until you get to the Brute intersection which you can identify off of the Rogue Valley VOR there. And then you make a right turn and then continue out on the DME, uh, sorry, watching the DME until you get to Lanx which you can see in text form over on the right hand side here with the Lanx transition. You can also see that all of these transitions have all got very different names and none of them really sound like the other one. So let's listen to the pilot's readback. Roger, uh, the departure is a Root 7 or a Brute 7? B is in Bravo. Navajo 4, Bravo Romeo. Root 7, Bravo Romeo. Uniform, Tango, Echo. With the Lynx transition. Please give me the phonetic for the transition. Navajo 4, Bravo Romeo, Lima, Alpha, November, Kilo, Sierra. Roger, length transition, climb maintain 11,000, expect 15,000 within five minutes. Uh, departure freak is 124.3 and the uh, squawk is 6677 for 64, Bravo Romeo. Navajo 64, Bravo Romeo, read back correct. Now, judging by the number of exchanges it's taken for this pilot to get his clearance and read it back correctly, it sounds like he's not very familiar with the procedures of the area, so he's probably not local. And also, just by the lack of any familiarity with the names of the departures, it sounds like he wasn't that prepared to be flying IFR today. And he certainly wasn't expecting this departure, and it doesn't sound like he's given himself a lot of time in order to familiarize himself with it. So what I've done here is I've uh, set myself up in the Beach Baron, uh, which is the closest thing I could find to a Navajo in the flight simulator here. And I'm going to fly the departure, and I'm just going to have a talk around uh, what's going on. I'm going to assume worst case scenario is that he doesn't have a GPS. So even though I've got GPS information on here, I've actually set it all up so that I'm not going to be using the GPS and uh, we'll have a higher workload in that situation. And then I'll show you the GPS situation after. I've preset everything that I'm going to need. So I've got the ADF needle set up uh, for the NDB and I've also got the 098 radial set up ready to go for, on the CDI uh, from the OED VOR. So basically all I've got to do now is just track and intercept these bearings at, that I've already set up. So now we're rolling down the runway, we can know that we're going to have to make a pretty immediate right turn after departure. Now the question is, when do we actually start that turn? So normal IFR procedures would be to start that turn at 400 feet in the absence of any other written procedure or instruction. And this would be something that you would expect any IFR rated and qualified pilot to know. Mr. Tower 64 Bravo Romeo is off. Will you be calling my turn for the Brute 7? Bravo 64 Bravo Romeo, negative. Just fly the uh, SID as published. 
Now this question that the pilot asked the control tower is an alarm bell to me because it sounds like he doesn't actually know what he's supposed to be doing and he's taken off into solid IFR conditions without really knowing what he has to do here and I think it actually concerns the air traffic controller as well as you'll find out shortly. Like I said before the normal procedure here will be to start that turn at 400 feet above the ground level so the Elevation at the airport here is about 1300 feet, so you'd expect to be making that turn around 1700 feet, which is what we are about now, so I'll be making that right turn very shortly. Level 64 Bravo Romeo, you're going to make a right turn, climbing, and overfly the NDB or the approach end of runway 14, which of course you can't see. So it's the NDB using the NDB or your GPS, and then proceed to Brute intersection and then proceed to links and then on course. Now it's not normal for an air traffic controller to be coaching a pilot through a departure procedure that's published like this uh, because he's already got the charts and he should already have all of his equipment set up for that procedure so I think at this point the pilot's lost the confidence of the air traffic controller that he actually knows where he's going and what to do. I've tried to duplicate the conditions that were reported on the day so I would have estimated that the pilot would have got clear of the clouds around about here but you can see that it's quite a long time to turn in IMC straight after takeoff as well very low to the ground it is definitely a threat to uh, the flight to be doing a turn that low for that long at that point so we're rolling down the runway here we're going to do the same departure but this time I've programmed it into the GPS And you'll see here as we pass through the 1700 feet uh, the GPS will command the turn for us so basically it will change the position on the course deviation indicator and show us the new course and we'll have to make a right turn to intercept that. So the CDI is now changed and it's showing us a new course which means we have to make a right turn to intercept that. You'll also see over on the MFD here we've got a picture of the uh, lateral plan of the departure so that also gives us a bit more situational awareness. Now it seems that the aircraft got to about this position and one possible cause of the accident would be that maybe the pilot looked down at the chart because he wasn't sure whereabouts he was going next maybe he didn't have it fully set up properly in the equipment before he took off uh, so he was changing some of the radios or something like that and it looks to me like a spiral dive was entered and then the unfortunate consequences of that are that he ended up uh, hitting the ground because he, at this kind of height you don't really have that much time to react and recover and you can kind of tell that from this pattern here which looks like a classic kind of spiral dive pattern Low altitude alert, Navajo 64 Bravo Romeo, check your altitude immediately Bedford altimeter 3039er, your altitude indicates 1,700. Navajo 64 Bravo Romeo, are you on top? Navajo 64 Bravo Romeo, Medford Tower, how do you hear? Medford ground, truck 80. Truck 80, Medford Tower. The aircraft appears to have crashed over by the Subaru Chevron dealer, approximately one mile from the airport due south. Truck 80, roger that. What type of aircraft, please? Medford Tower, Truck 80. What type of aircraft? Truck 80, it was a Navajo, PA-31. As far as I know, there was only one person on board, but I can't verify that. Roger that. Thank you.